1954, Godzilla was created to rule the world and teach us all about the mistakes of using nuclear weaponry and atomic weaponry. And still to this day, Godzilla continues to rampage into the hearts of many and live on in forever and know them and geek them everywhere. But were there ripoffs? Well, there were some, but once you meet the king, you never want to go back, baby. But unfortunately, where there comes a successful cash cow, there must be the offspring that we never talk about. This is Giant Mygene, a DVD I found at a thrift store, and weirdly enough, I can find no information on this aside from the back of the DVD. The back of the DVD said that it's <laughs> better than Godzilla and <laughs> bigger than Godzilla and better than Gamera. Oh no, he's not a friend of the children. But this is put out by the same company that we read Gamera. And that is Die Motion Picture. Hmm, interesting. The back of the box promises about what it's about and saying that it is famous Japanese. Television, the same level as the Magic Serpent. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Making quite the bold claim there, aren't we, Giant Maijin? Well, they're actually known by their real name, Dai Maijin and Dai Maijin Ikaru. Or you might know them as Maijin, Monster of Terror, and The Return of Giant Maijin. But are these films any good in any capacity? Well, there's only one way to find out. And that is to watch. Giant Maijin begins with the text on fire, including an infamous score by the one and only Akira Ifukabe. Giant Maijin truly begins with two Japanese warlords fighting it out over a small Japanese countryside. Do you see anything wrong with this film? Maybe it's trying to catch in on the Seventh Samurai, but for me, I think it's trying to catch in on something even more, but I digress. Also, the English dub was handled by a different English dubbing company, and is the English dub any good for any of those wondering? We saw your misplacement or film. We're on a search. What do you hope to find, Yeah, I think I'll stick with the double the water. At least it was done by some classified genius like, oh, I don't know, Frank Welker. <laughs> Please, you people need a voice acting god to make this movie work. And what's sad is that this is the most interesting shot of the movie, and it just doesn't work. The plot is that these people want to get rid of the Japanese warlords, but they have no idea of how to do it. Maybe trying to make a peace treaty might work, but it's no guarantee. Instead, they think of the summon the giant Maijin, but they don't want to because they're afraid that the giant Maijin will destroy everything in its path. But that doesn't stop them from summoning the big giant creature himself, who pops up after one hour of this film. Yeah. And Godzilla, Godzilla shows up rather quickly, but then makes a more dramatic performance and appearance here. Yeah. This is Giant Maijin. Jesus Christ, he looks like a rejected Power Rangers villain crossed over with someone from Big Bad Beetle Boy mixed in with Ultraman. Point is, he looks silly. And to compare him to even the giants of Power Rangers, Beetle Boys, and Ultraman, yeah, he's even more ridiculous than that. He looks like that he could come from frickin' Teenage Fighters from Teenage Mutant Ninja Fighters from Beverly Hills. But this is the problem with the movie, that this is when the monster shows up, and all he does is just rampage. That's it. Oh, and nice to have some Jesus Christ symbolism in your movie, movie. I give you a thumbs up and a big old fuck you too. Because, yeah, let's make our viewers uncomfortable. So all Maijin does is just show up, go over his island style, and just start rampaging through everything, and he killed both the warlords. That's it, and the end of the movie. So does this really need a sequel? I think this movie jumped the gun a bit by making a sequel. And is the sequel any good? <laughs> Listen movie, if your movie opened up on a picture of a giant hole in a cave, 
clearly this means that you have some other imagery that you want to get out of the way from your head. But is this movie any better? The movie is about a bunch of people who run a, who want to run away from two Japanese warlords that come in to evade the village. It's the same plot of the same movie with the same voice actors. And you know what? It takes just the same amount of time. It takes the same amount of time to get to the giant monster. Only this time, just a little bit after an hour. Just a little bit before he shows up. And nice try, movie. You can try to sell this guy all you want as a major villain. But he will not be popping up in any Godzilla film anytime soon. Or did I just give WB executives a wild try? Also, uh... Did he, um... Did he just pull a Prince of Egypt moment? Oh god, is he gonna start singing? Let my people go! I sure as hell hope not. And the movie ends the same way as the first one. Giant Majin shows up, shows a rampage against the Japanese warlord for taking over the country, and then he just leaves. And is there any more sequels after this? No, thank fucking god! Film writer and director Kevin Smith always said that if you have a couple friends, a video camera, and some whatnot, you can pull together a successful movie. Well, you know what I say to Giant Maijin? It wasn't at all successful. So you know what? If you want to watch a better Giant Monster movie, grab some snacks, grab some drinks, and throw on a good old Giant Monster Godzilla film. Because what else can I say but you don't mess with the king.